This is Steve Zeltzer with Pacifica. I'm here at Pier 35 in San Francisco where the Grand Princess will be docking. There will be a fight over the effort to get the seafarers crew members off the ship. Keep pressing the demand. These workers are not safe on a ship that has been contaminated until they decommission and disinfect it. These workers are at risk. Uh, there's, there was that video. The workers want to get off. The ones that we heard of, the one that made the video. And so we're here to stand with them. The Filipino community, the South Asian community, the labor folks are out here as well, making sure that the workers, not just the passengers, are taken care of. That there are workers still on board this ship who are in danger, at risk of being infected with COVID-19. This is unacceptable, and we are demanding that Grand Princess must ensure the testing, the treatment of all workers on the ship, and for transparency. This campaign has been going on for a long time, and this is just the latest iteration. We know that this ship made news as early as March 4th, if not before. when there were confirmed cases of COVID-19 um, and President Trump, Vice President Pence, they're making claims that the, the workers shouldn't disembark from the ship, they should just uh, go out to sea, which is unacceptable. Uh, this is John Avalos and I'm here uh work at the National Union of Healthcare Workers here in solidarity with uh, NAFCON, the National Alliance for Filipino Concerns and Migrante. Uh, we're here in support of uh, the workers here on the cruise ship uh, Grand Princess. Uh, this, the, these workers have been floating about the bay uh, for about a month now. Uh, they've also had a quarantine experience as well where people on board have been tested. The ones who were tested, a good part of them, 17%, actually had coronavirus. Uh, and since that time, these workers have just been uh, waiting to see what their fate's going to be. The Grand Princess has been totally untransparent about what medical care these workers are getting, whether they've been tested, whether they have enough to eat. Uh, we don't know if they're getting paid. Uh, and so they're in a complete... Uh, state of uncertainty about their future. Uh, many of them are uh, want to go home. There was a video that uh, Indian workers on board the ship uh, had shared on March 16th uh, where they wanted to be sent, they wanted to be able to go home. They're still on board this, this boat uh, and that's, that's, that's ongoing. There are about uh, 600 people altogether who are here uh, whose fate is uncertain. Uh, we're demanding uh, that they all receive the medical care that they need. If they need to be tested, they should be, have to be tested on demand uh, for coronavirus and get treatment that they might need. I'm Jack Heyman, retired member of the Longshore Union here in San Francisco. The protests here about the crew who were working on a contaminated ship, many of whom have the uh, coronavirus, they're infected by it and they need medical treatment. Uh, the whole crew needs to be tested to see who has it and who doesn't. So we're out here in support of the crew for safe working conditions, but also for longshoremen that have been faced with these same unsafe conditions on, on the dock. Because the equipment uh, that is handled is, some of it is contaminated and it needs to be cleaned and decontaminated by professional cleaners, and the uh, employers have been resistant to that. And uh, a seafarer died. Why did that he die, and why was he on the ship, the seafarer? Uh, last week, the seafarer who died was working lashing a ship, lashing the containers down onto the ship, and uh, he fell off the side, uh, hit the dock, and then went into the water. And Longshore, workers uh, have some of the most dangerous conditions of, of all workers. Uh, uh, longshore deaths are, are, are a common feature of, of the job, unfortunately. And that's why they're so conscientious about safe working conditions. Just uh, a few weeks before that, we had a woman longshore person uh, die on the job as well. So we're in uh, sympathy with the crew. We, we want to make sure that, uh, I don't know if uh, the listeners uh, are aware, but one of the crew members 
was taken off the ship by helicopter over a week ago and flown to San Francisco General. He died just a few days ago. So both longshoremen and crew members are being affected by this COVID-19 virus. And we're not given proper training or cleaning. Hi, my name is Pixie Castillo. I'm a national officer with Gabriela USA. We're a national alliance of Filipino women's organizations and an international chapter of Gabriela in the Philippines. And why are you here today? Um, we're here, um, I'm here on behalf of Gabriela USA um, to demand treatment, uh, transparency, and testing for the Grand uh, Princess cruise ship seafarers. Um, they've been on this uh, ship for more than a month and they've been active um, testing. We know that there have been cases of COVID on the ship um, and we want to hold um, both the owners of the Grand Cruise uh, a princess, Grand Princess cruise ship accountable and also um, we're asking for um, where is the support also from um, the protection of the workers rights here as they've docked in the uh, San Francisco Bay Area. And do you think all the crew members should be evacuated here instead yeah. of being imprisoned on the ship? Yes, although that we've been told that they voluntarily stayed on the ship, uh, we know from previous uh, cruise ship um, incidences where COVID's been found that the ship acts then like a petri dish, of which um, we don't know if the workers have been um, tested um, for COVID or if you know they stay on the ship longer, how much more exposure is that to the virus. We definitely think that uh, we should uh, really also um, hold the rights and welfare of the cruise ship uh, workers, um, the seafarers who've been on board the ship and haven't been um, able to get off, uh, and also um, to also juxtapose the position that the cruise line has taken for uh, the passengers who were uh, let off the ship um, much earlier um, and which and with many more uh, precautions taken for their health and safety. And what are the conditions of the Philippine on many of the migrant workers who work on the ships? Uh, for many of the migrant workers who work on the ships, um, there are uh, several hundreds of thousands of seafarers that work on similar ships, cruise lines, as well as cargo ships all over the world. Um, and so we know that uh, they've taken up these jobs because in the Philippines there aren't as many um, opportunities and so um, there's really a system that pushes uh, Filipinos to go overseas and so uh, we really feel for uh, the workers who are um, overseas, who are away from their families. Um, we know that everyone right now is going through a hard time with social distancing but we should also understand that um, overseas Filipino workers have been social distancing um, ever since they decided ever since they've been um, forced to leave the Philippines to seek work overseas and be away from their families for decades years at a time. And do you think racism has anything to be connected to the treatment of these workers? Um, I think not only is there um, possibilities, you know, of course, for discrimination um, and racism, but really if we look at what's happening to the workers, there's definitely a divide between those who um, were able to pay for um, being on this cruise ship and those who are working on the cruise ship. So there's definitely a class divide and discrimination um, that racism does play a part in all of that. I'm gonna get it! People power! Tell me what you want, what you really want! Justice! Tell me what you need, what you really want! And workers' rights are under attack. What do we do? Stand up, fight back. The people united will never be defeated. The people united will never be defeated. Posted online asking for immediate evacuation. That was in the middle of March. And now Princess Cruises is telling us that the workers will not come off the ship despite professional guidelines that say that all people should be disembarked, that they should be treated, that they should be quarantined and given treatment in our onshore facilities. What kind of corporation would leave over 600 workers at risk of being infected with COVID-19 with this global pandemic? It's a corporation that doesn't treat workers as humans. It's a corporation 
that is prioritizing its own operations, its own profits, at the expense of 600 plus workers and their families. All of us here are trying our best to curb the pandemic. All of our best are trying, we're, we're doing our best, especially frontliners. These workers on that crew were frontliners for the thousands of passengers were, that were on that ship. And what does Princess Cruises do to them? It treats as if, them as if they're nothing, as if they're not worth having full treatment, as if they're not worth getting full tested, as if they're not worth disembarking from the ship. And certain citizens, people here in this country, people all over the world who are watching this right now, their eyes are on Grand Princess. Their eyes are on Princess Cruises. And that corporation should know that we will not stop until we get full justice for the workers. What you want, what you really want. Justice. Tell me what you need, what you really need. Justice. How we gonna get it? People power. Said how we gonna get it? People power. Said how we gonna get it? People power. How we gonna get it? People power. When workers' rights are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back. When seafarer rights are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back. When immigrant rights are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back. When workers' rights are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back. Long live international solidarity.